Life in BC can be full of surprises, <laughs> such as unexpectedly finding yourself in a Dutch lesson. But the you pail is in. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks to And having to pay attention. Bread. Bread. The coffee is very welcome, though. I'm visiting Abbotsford in the Fraser Valley, an area famous for its farms, and my first stop is here at the Fruit Basket Farm to pick blueberries. Before the picking starts, however, we all get a short lesson in Dutch. Bye, off I go picking. Today's lesson over, the pickers set out for the fields, and I team up with Wilhelmina Jaeger, whose family have farmed here since 1985. Out in the fields, those delicious, plump, ripe blueberries are waiting for us. This looks like the perfect spot because we don't have to stretch, we don't have to bend no, over. No, and we put our baskets on these crates. On the crates so that they're not on the floor? Because food safety. Right, Food safety right, okay. is very important. Now, I will teach you this berry has a little film on the berry. Okay. That's the protection. Right. So you don't rub them because then they become dark. And bruised? And, and no, and then they release the juice. So we like to have them with the film on. Okay. So what you do, you ho hold your hand and you okay. do it with your thumb. So just like just, this, and just roll them in your hand. So touch them as little as possible. Yes. Okay. Yes. Be very careful and roll them with your hands and then they're nice okay. and bluish. So shall I try? So, oh, yeah, look, you at, try. look at that one. There's a beautiful so. cluster. And when they're ripe, they just fall they off. They just fall off in your hands. And look, so. I still can't get over how big and plump and beautiful no, these are. And did you are. try them already? Have I you ha tried I, some you berries what? already? What does it they say? One yeah, for the basket, one for the basket, one for, one the, for, picker. The, yeah, one for mm -hmm. the picker. And yeah. what you should do, you should take a handful, yeah. because then the taste blends in. Because there might be a little purple one. Then, Which is a little bit more tart. Yeah, bit then more you pick them out and say, mm, they're not so sweet. But when you have a handful, then the taste blends in. I remember in Holland, I didn't know blueberries much. When we had a tummy ache, my mom had a little bottle of blueberry juice. Yes, yes. And she said, you drink it and that will cure you. And it made you better. And it <laughs> made us better. Of course. I don't know what was It's quite pretend, well known how healthy blueberries, antioxidants very, and, and very healthy. Lots, of, lots of phytochemicals and things for, yes. for very good health. Yeah. Very, yeah. How many blueberries are grown here? I understand we, we do very, very oh, well growing very blueberries, don't we? Well. 23,000 acres of blueberries in, planted and in and BC. That's, that's in that, most of that is in the Fraser Valley? Most of it is in the Fraser Valley and uh, Delta and so on area. We're the biggest growing area in the world. Are you serious? Yes, we are very serious. I never knew that. I knew so, we grew a lot, but I didn't yeah. realize that we were the largest. And yeah, that's the a, largest. That's something to be very proud of. Yes. Again, because from a culinary perspective, as I say, blueberries are one of those things that we, we know how good they are. And I think the yeah. rest of the world is, is, is learning. Is Blueberry picking is one of those summer jobs that everyone enjoys. Hi. Our baskets filled, we head back to get them weighed. 11 pounds, so I write it down here for the picker. And boxed. And then it's back to the fields for more. I'm visiting Abbotsford in the Fraser Valley. Abbotsford calls itself the city in the country, and with good reason. Large enough to provide all the amenities of urban life, it is surrounded by the fertile floodplain of the Fraser River, some of the best farmland in BC, which gives its lucky inhabitants access to some of the best local food. At Restaurant 62, award-winning chef Jeff Massey makes good use of this. Well, we've been busy this summer at the restaurant. We, we've gone out to Lillooet and, and we've done a lot of local shopping. So I've got apricots, blueberries, we've got some tea poached cherries. And we're going to do a couple of our appetizers that we're featuring on the menu right now. What, let's get going. Let's okay, first thing I want to do, this is a Fraser Valley duck breast. So I'm okay. just going to, I've got a little bit of salt underneath. I'm going to hit it with a little bit more salt over top. Yep. And we're going to start to slowly render off this duck fat. So I've had a pan here gently warming on the heat. We're just going to kind of slide that right in. Okay. I didn't uh, no fat in the pan because, of course, you've got lots of fat coming out of the duck breast. Absolutely. So this is a Goat Pride at McLennan Creek, and this is a, a real nice little product. It's called the Chevrotina Button. Just seeing new products or just beautiful products. I'm a real fan of the classics, simple foods, simple ingredients that are just unbelievable quality. And you really don't have to do anything to them, just make them shine a little bit. So just about ready to turn that over and give it a few seconds. So I'm going to pop these uh, goat cheese into the oven here. Okay. We're going to give those about three or four minutes just to soften. Yep. And we'll talk a little bit about our salad. So this is um, 
Just a nice little frisee baby mizuna. I've got a little bit of red oak in there. A little salt, a little pepper, not a ton. I'm not really gonna add too much in the way of a dressing. I'm just gonna go with some extra virgin olive oil. Yep. I love coming to work every single day and not knowing exactly what's gonna happen. You, you have, you've always got a plan, you've always got your routine, but there, every day there's a new challenge. This is some of the uh, Golden Years Cheeseworks Gouda Cheese. This is a little uh, blueberry rosemary red wine sugar compote right. there. I'm gonna pull out the goat cheese here. This is a little apricot and white wine. A few pine nuts. Of course, they forgot some pine nuts. They're just the, the perfect. They, they just marry so well together, don't they? I love a little celery heart. Just right up on top, just celery heart leaves. And that's yeah, it. That's, that's a, a real classic beautiful kind of looking a... place. Restaurant 62 is a great example of a local restaurant using local food. But my next stop in downtown Abbotsford is a local success story that's also part of a much wider phenomenon. A few years ago, small cafes and bakeries began to appear everywhere, selling beautifully decorated little cakes. Welcome to the fluffy pink world of cupcakes. Tracy Duick opened Tracy Cakes Bakery Cafe in 2006, and her timing could not have been better. I'm a stay-at-home mom, so I, we chose when our kids were little, I would stay at home, and I wanted to do that and was passionate about that. And if I thought if I had died before then, then if I just said mom on my tombstone, then that was good enough. But I also realized that, you know what, I was at the end of raising children, and all of a sudden I was going to be retired at quite young, and I thought, what am I going to do? Like, and I realized that throughout the kids' lives, I had made a lot of cupcakes. Didn't really realize that it was... Um, Kind of, we just hit the craze of cupcakes. Tracy Cakes now has three locations and has added other treats to their menu, including high tea. On the bottom, there'll be the um, your finger sandwiches, right. which are generally you can do a number of things. You can do salmon, um, curry, chicken, and of course you're, you've got to have a cucumber you've sandwich. You've got to have with, cucumber sandwich with cream cheese. Of course, being in the Fraser Valley, you have access to some of the finest food in BC. Mm -hmm. Um, are you able to source a lot of your products locally? We get lots of fresh berries, strawberries, um, and anything that's around here that I can get my hands on mm. that's grown organically or fresh that I can grab is really exciting to be, to be able to do that. We, we really try hard to use the food as a catalyst to create the connectedness between two people or maybe four people or a group of people. Because um, we feel that we live in this world where it's, we've lost a little bit of community and now we give you this chance to sit together with someone that you truly care about and like have this time and the food is just the catalyst to create when you leave the experience which was just connecting with that other person which we think is really important. What's the future for Tracy Cakes? Do you, do you see an empire? An empire beyond the three, the three locations? I do actually. I think when I opened the first one I didn't dream big enough because I just didn't realize the potential, mm -hmm. you know, and even my own potential. Like, I think everyone should see themselves, you know, it could be a greater thing. Yeah. But more importantly, I'm here to really just make the world sweeter one bite at a time. From sweet and decadent treats to something altogether saltier. I'm in the rich farmland just outside Abbotsford on my way to meet Kirk Hominick to talk about hard bite potato chips. This place looks familiar though. And I don't see any potatoes here. You must be Kirk. Yes. Welcome. I have to say I'm a little confused. I thought we were coming to talk about potato chips, <laughs> and we're here in front of a biogas plant. <laughs> That's right. It's a, it's an interesting kind of mix of uh, a fully integrated company that's been formed by the, uh, the Heppel Potato Corp. Uh, in addition to owning uh, hard bite potato chips, and, right. and of course uh, are, are a major potato producer in the region, they also own this biogas plant here oh, uh, right. in the Fraser Valley, and they're converting organic waste into uh, renewable energy. Isn't that bad? I mean, we have visited this plant before when it was first built, and, and it, at that point it was a lot of, um, of, of cow and, and chicken product. But now, of course, you're incorporating plant products into the system. That's right. When you talk about integration, is is really uh, uh, stretched out, and it's, it's very exciting for us as an organization. The plant takes organic waste from both animals and plants and produces purified biogas, which can be used exactly like natural gas, but it is a carbon-neutral, fully renewable energy source. 
Most consumers in BC can already sign up to use biogas from the gas supply company. Once the gas has been extracted, the waste from the plant goes back onto these fields as compost, helping to grow the next crop of potatoes. Now, potatoes, of course, are a tuber, aren't they? they yes. All of these ends will turn into tubers. As you can see, we have some large, yeah. large-sized potatoes, followed by small ones. Right. These large ones will reach the point of maturity, obviously sooner than the small ones, yep. but these will all come up to a marketable size. Are all of these potatoes for potato chips? No, no, actually apples is, is a big producer and they're, they're supplying the fresh market as well too. So right. a lot of the, the potatoes that you're buying in the produce section is actually coming from their fields. Oh, okay. uh, hard bite in our potato chips is, is, is a, certainly a component of, but, uh, but uh, apples are, are much broader in their reach to the consumer. Right. We've been talking about potato chips long enough. I think it's about time we tried some. So we've got rock salt and vinegar, just the, the, the traditional yep. salt and vinegar. But yeah. Now a lot of folks don't know. This oh really? Is the only potato chip made in British so Columbia. So some of the, the the commonly known ones are not made in British Columbia anymore. That's right. Wow. That's wow. Right. And these are just. And these are, are these are these are kettle chips. Yeah, kettle chips. Kettle so. style, small batch, hand cooked. That's our big thing. Those are delicious. Thank you. It tastes great. I know potato chips are not supposed to be healthy. But these taste great, and these guys are obviously thriving. This is the first time in my life I've ever felt short. I was absolutely amazed at the, the bounty of stuff that's available in Abbotsford. And now we're back in the studio kitchen, and it really is my pleasure and my honor to welcome Louise Rose into the kitchen. Thank you very, very much for coming in today. Bless your darling heart. So we've got some nice farmhouse poultry here. And this is that air chilled stuff from up island. I'm going to give you a nice fresh chicken breast on your board there. Thank you. And I'm going to put one on my side here. We're just going to butterfly it. Okay. okay. So which means we want to open it up so it's basically twice the size. So if you want to take your little, your little paring knife from the front there. And then if you take this little fillet piece and just kind of fold that back. And then bring your knife in. And if you just cut through there like so, and then that whole thing will just open right up for us, like so. And then we're going to beat up a chicken, because I bet you never expected that. So we're going to take this little piece of plastic wrap that I've given you over there, and we're just going to lay that across the chicken. Now you can use a meat mallet. I personally prefer to use a nice small pan. Apart from anything else, it's got a nice wide surface area, and it's not going to damage the chicken too much. All we want to do is just sort of flatten this out. So you can just use the back of the pan. Just so that it's all sort of, it's kind of an even thickness. So you can go home and tell people you came in and beat up a chicken. Perfect. That's seven it. and seven. Seven and seven, that's all you need. Okay, so then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna flip this over and we're gonna put that chicken on the plastic wrap at the end closest to you, just like so. Mm -hmm. Now, I know some of the things you're involved in, but will you tell, tell our viewers what some of the things that you do and some of the things that you're involved in? I make music for a living. And absolutely beautiful music. Thank you. I have to say. Thank you. And, and I teach and I do concerts and I conduct a couple of choirs and a couple, volunteer. A couple of choirs. You, you, understand, choirs. you understand yeah. so beautifully. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to take some beautiful goat cheese here. I'll give you a, a nice little nugget of goat cheese. What I want you to do is to take the tips of your fingers mm -hmm. and just kind of Spread that around the chicken. Oh, before you do that, one thing we forgot, we're just gonna do a little bit of seasoning. A little bit of pepper. Lovely. A little bit, and this is Vancouver on the sea salt. This is, this oh, is. Oh, from, yeah. From Andrew up mm -hmm. at uh, Cobble Hill. Mm -hmm. Now we wanna spread this fairly thinly. Now tell me about these choirs that you work with, because I know well, they're, they're very, pretty special. I have a big do. choir and a little choir. Right. And the big choir is the Victoria Good News Choir, yeah. which is a non-audition community choir and we do three major concerts a year. And then I have a little choir, my little choir, shall I do that? Absolutely, you're gonna take a little have, handful of blueberries, just press them in. I have a little choir, ooh, I like this. <laughs> ooh. There we go, I chicken like and chicken, chicken and, and goat berries. cheese and blueberries. I just and then that. I have a little choir, the open door choir at our place, which is a choir of predominantly street people. Now this is the one I want to talk to you about because this is something that, again, it's like chicken and blueberries. Doesn't people automatically don't put the two together? 
but you've got street people. people I don't know why you don't put the two together. This thing about singing is, a, is about making a joyful noise. It's not about singing. Right. And we've got so nuts about the voice and the sing off and the duck off and yeah. whatever. Singing is about singing. It's about, That's like all it is about joy. making a joyful noise. Yeah. yeah, it's not about how good you are. Okay, so what we're gonna do with this is now you're gonna take the plastic wrap from the end here mm. and just roll it up and just nice and tight, just sort of roll that chicken and press those blueberries into that. And if you use the plastic wrap to kind of pull it over. Well, it's just like sushi. Just like sushi, you got it in one. You got it in one and just sort of pull that right over. Keep this, this the front edge loose for the time being and you can kind of roll that and just finish the roll. And try and keep these edges pulled out nice and neat if you can because we're gonna have to tie those. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one end and just pinch it and, and roll that nice and tight. Pinch that end, roll it over. Now you can tie this with a bit of string if you don't have any string. Take a little bit of plastic wrap. Plastic wrap is very, very strong. Uh -huh. So I've given you a couple of strips at the end there. And just tie that end off nice and snug. So what you want to do now is sort of force it up to the, the back side that you've tied off. So you can kind of take this end and pinch this one off and then keep rolling it. Always push in one direction and just keep that pinched. You see what happens, how it tightens up? Tie that off. And there is our little chicken roulock ready to go into our poaching liquid. So, what we're going to do is kill two birds with one stone, as they say. No, sing two songs with one note. Two songs with one note. I like it. I like yeah. it. So I've got my potatoes here for my hash that are just going to be out of there. My little asbestos fingers mm -hmm. will lift those out. And then we can use that same water to cook our chicken. We can drop that one in there. Great. Thank you. Now, when you cook this, you want your water to be less than a simmer. So if you see bubbles, you want to drop the temperature a little bit. Poaching is not about boiling. It's just about having that water temperature just below the boil so that mm -hmm. the heat comes through nice and gently. Is there a chemical change in that plastic wrap when it's Not heated? really. We're, we're doing low temperature. If okay. we were boiling or, or working in the oven with it, then there are some concerns about the, the plastic. Because we're relatively low temperature, we're below that boiling point, the plastic is, is relatively benign. Okay. Okay. Thank um, you. Now, what we're going to do next I've got some nice red potatoes. Now red potatoes have, have a thin skin, so we can leave the skin on. So then we're just gonna cut this into a, a dice. Okay. About two tablespoons of oil there. We've got lots of heat going there. We can smell that. And I'm just gonna gently put these potatoes in there. I need that pan to be hot. If the pan's not hot, then those sugars will glue themselves to the pan. As always, a little bit of salt and pepper. And I'm just gonna give that a little, little bit of oil around the edge as well, just to make sure it's nice and lubricated. You notice I've not moved it yet. Again, I noticed. I want, those, I want that starch that's in contact with the pan to crisp. Mm -hmm. And if I do that, this pan will become non-stick. Mm -hmm. If I start to move it now, what happens is that that starch is kind of gummy and And you and also gluey. move the, you lose the color. You lose the color. You lose the yeah. color as well. We've got that nice caramelization there with the potatoes. The skin is just starting to brown. So then we can go in with a little bit of our, our onion there. So we'll just let that do its thing for a few Beautiful. seconds. Now we've got our corn. Mm -hmm. Of course, local corn, so that's going to go into our... And of course, this will brown very quickly. And I've got a little garlic as well. And again, because it's very finely chopped, mm -hmm. it'll release its flavor very quickly and potentially burn. So I'm adding that at the end. And that's basically it. We're just going to let that continue cooking for a few minutes. If you could just cut that. Perfect. And I'll just drain that out. There we go. And then we can just put that down there. So what we're going to do is take the, the end completely off of one side, and then all you do with the other end is just whoosh, slide that right off of there. <laughs> Don't look at me like that, Louise. Don't look at me in that tone of voice. <laughs> <laughs> and then all we're going to do is take our knife and cut it into three or four pieces, just on a nice 45 degree angle. And look at those beautiful blueberries just popping through the center there. And then we can take these guys and just position them on top of our hash there. A little happiness in your mouth, don't you know? I got a little party going on. Mm. A little dance, it makes me want to dance. Louise, thank you very much. Do I get to take this home? You get to take home anything that you want. Anything you want, it's all yours. <laughs> I'll be waiting for you. <laughs> thank you so much. Marvelous. And uh, yeah. Those are some of the flavors of Abbotsford.
For all of the great local recipes from season one and two of Flavors, see our brand new cookbook, available now in this bookstore near you. So here at the Penny Farthing Pub, we've chosen to pair this dish with the Beachcomber Summer Ale. It's a seasonal beer from Vancouver Island Brewery. This beer pairs very nicely with this dish as the citrus notes will really balance out the earthiness of the potato hash and goat cheese. There's a lot of light, delicate flavors in this dish, which pairs nicely with this beer as well because it's not going to overpower the dish. The Beachcomber Summer Ale is part of our five mile beer diet here at the Penny Farthing. Well, Rod, thank you once again for joining us in the Flavors Kitchen. Happy to be. Beautiful chicken, beautiful blueberries, corn. What have you got for us? This is the Prospect Winery Major Allen Merlot. Oh. See, now there's some great acidity on this. Lots of fresh fruit on it, but it's not bombastic. It's no. not going to overpower the food. This is going to work really well, especially when you get the sugars and the herbalness out of the, out of the corn. Nice so the next one, this is a bit of a treat because uh, our friends at Hillside have been hanging on to wines. You know, one of the things that we do here in, in BC, in North America in particular, is that we have a tendency to drink our wines way too early. Mm -hmm. This is the 2006. So they've been holding on to this for a number of years now, and therefore you're getting the full marriage of the integration of all the flavors and all the nuances of the wine. It's really that it chance to mature. Exactly. Yeah. Now this one, like a great dish, you just want to let it sit on your palate and just unfold. Just, just, it just needs to open up and blossom. As you say, it's, it's had that opportunity to, to meld and develop those flavors. Again, two Merlot is very, very different. Both excellent, but again, that's got that, that, that complexity to it. Exactly, it? exactly. And the last one here is a Tempranillo out of the La Mancha area of Spain. Now this one I chose after tasting about 300 wines. Uh, and you it, were capable of tasting this one after 300 wines? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, it was a short day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I chose this wine in, in honor of uh, my uncle who passed away a couple of years back. And this, every bottle that we sell of this, a dollar goes to Victoria Hospice. But he loved old world wines. He was a member of the Opinion Society and he loved old world wines that had greater acidity, more earthy flavors. And that's exactly what will go well with this dish. Yeah. And notice the silkiness on the on the finish. That will, you know, the, the chicken has a, a silkiness to it. Yeah. Like a really nicely done chicken has a silkiness to it. Lovely. That earthy quality. Oh, oh that I like it. Stuff. You know what, Rob? Every time we do this, you constantly, you never fail to amaze me that you you, you pick up on the, the notes in the dish and pair them perfectly. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you once again. Another job well done. Excellent. Cheers. Thank you. Flavors of the West Coast is made possible by the generous contributions of the Victoria Pub Company, Country Grocer, and Fortis, BC.